see me, you Stevie. Wondering how I reach more evolutions than Eevee and make it look easy. What is up, Earth's mightiest subscribers? It's Blur Without Fear. Welcome back to the channel. Today's video, I'm gonna be talking about Bishop War College number three by Jay Holtzman, Sean Damien Hill. When I did my video for the first issue of Bishop War College, one of the things that just kind of came to mind to me, it was like a, a, a phrasing that came to mind to me, was black to the future is basically what uh, the ending of that issue kind of came off as. It all kind of looked like Bishop being somehow transported into the future by his war college teammate Tempo into the future and things having been changed in some strange way to where he's now sitting in front of a black Jean Grey and a black Cyclops. And while I didn't do a video for the second issue, we did quickly learn that there was also a black Charles Xavier and it doesn't really stop there. It's not so much that Bishop went quotey fingers black to the future but instead bishop has been transported to another planet another earth in the multiverse the earth in question being earth 63 a literal black planet and what i mean by that is that it seems like the predominant ethnicity on this planet is black. This is an Earth where Charles Xavier, as well as a lot of the X-Men that we are familiar with, characters like Mr. Sinister, Sebastian Shaw, Emma Frost, Colossus, Nightcrawler, all of these characters are black. While we don't see every current roster X-Men character uh, you know, that is in the current crop of the X-Men comics in the Earth 616 universe, it's safe to say that pretty much every character you can imagine, even Mystique is black, or at the very least is depicted to be black, despite the fact that she is blue, but she has very black features. So yeah, this is pretty wild. If you really think about it, Earth 63 is basically like the comic book equivalent of- I'm rooting for um everybody black. I'm talking- and I'm black, y'all, and I'm blacker than black, and I'm black, y'all. And not only is this a world where most, if not all, of the X-Men are black, this is also a world where Charles Xavier, when he started the Xavier School for Gifted Youngsters, he did this not just for mutants as a whole, but he did this more specifically for black mutants. Now, it's not to say that there aren't any white students or any students of any other color there, but for all intents and purposes, the Xavier School for Gifted Youngsters is like an HBCU. It's a different world. Not only is this world incredibly different, but it's also a world that still follows the House of X moniker. Whereas it seems in this universe, the mutants of Earth-63 took a slightly different direction. Now, we haven't seen enough to know whether or not the Charles Xavier of Earth-63 is as problematic as the Charles Xavier of Earth-616, but what we definitely know is that this version of Charles Xavier still had the best intentions in mind, and he actually achieved the dream, the mutant human peace dream. And in this world, humanity doesn't just out and out hate mutants on the whole. The people who hate mutants are considered on the fringe. They're not the norm. They're the exception, not the rule. In this world, Krakoa exists. The X-Men as we know them in Earth-616, they exist in the exact same fashion. The only difference is, is that this version of Charles Xavier was way more successful in integrating human and mutants together. And while no humans seem to live on Krakoa, mutants still exist out there among the rest of the world and are existing, thriving, and working together with humans to build a better society. The only people who are really out there trying to stop mutants from you know, existing or coexisting with humans and trying to kill mutants are the human liberation front, which probably wouldn't surprise you, is led by Moira McTaggart, who I think is pretty safe to say we haven't seen her in any of these issues so far on the Earth 63 side of things, but it's safe to say she's probably still a white woman. All in all, I love how all this is set up because Bishop has a very specific experience that even the mutants of Earth 63 cannot wrap their heads around. There's a point where Xavier shares Bishop's memories and experiences with the Quiet Council of Earth 63, and all of them are incredibly shocked to find out that most of them in that universe are white. It's also really interesting in this to watch Bishop interacting with his own self, a version of him who is less angry and more laid back and not so much a, a warrior or a soldier, but as a teacher at the Xavier's School for Gifted Youngsters and is just an infinitely more laid back guy than our Bishop could ever hope to be. They look exactly the same, minus their clothes and Earth 616 Bishop's very obvious M tattoo on his face. But yeah, 
Everything else is exactly the same other than their attitudes. I love this because it gives Marvel an equivalent to DC Comics Earth 23. For those unfamiliar, over on the DC Comics side of things, there is an Earth in the multiverse called Earth 23. This is the Earth where President Superman comes from. The Superman of that universe is a black man named Calvin Ellis. And on his Earth, not all the superheroes are black, but the majority of them are. Just about any DC Comics character who exists on Earth Prime, if you look them up in Earth 23, they are either black or brown. And even those who aren't, they're usually the outlier. And it's also a more progressive world where things are just overall more chill and laid back. That doesn't necessarily mean there aren't super villains running around because there definitely are, but just it's a world that just seems way more forward thinking than the world we live in in real life. Earth 63 of the Marvel Comics universe seems like exactly that. And honestly, I want more stories set in this universe because it's just so interesting to me. Because I remember when I made my video touting an all black X-Men team, I got called all kinds of racist and you know, all kinds of out of pocket for you know, even so much as thinking the idea of an all black X-Men team. And yet here we are, Marvel or more specifically, Jay Holtham and Sean Damian Hill have given us an all black X-Men and I'm here for it. Now there are some caveats to this earth. The one biggest caveat, and this is the one that actually is gonna hurt Bishop the most, is that the only person who can help him get back to his earth in the multiverse is Tempo. Which I find interesting considering that that implies that neither Gateway or Manifold exist in this universe, or at least if they do, where are they? Because that would easily be a way to fix Bishop being able to get back to his Earth. And for those wondering why he can't do it himself, it's because he's not in a different time. He's in a completely different reality. And while Bishop is able to time travel, his time travel doesn't always really seem to lend itself towards realities, at least not in the traditional sense. So he can't take himself back. This is a multiversal issue, not a time issue. He needs the help of Tempo. And right now, Tempo nowhere to be found. It's presumed that she's on that same earth with Bishop somewhere, just lost. But regardless of that, right now, the only Tempo in that universe that Bishop can get in contact with is that universe's version of Tempo, who is not a mutant. She is not a mutant. She does not go by the name Tempo. She just goes by her regular everyday name of Dr. Heather Tucker. And in this universe, she actually fills in more of a Moira McTaggart role that people who are more familiar with the older X-Men comics might be more accustomed to when they think of the character Moira McTaggart, someone who is a doctor who helps the X-Men, who works alongside them, who is very forward thinking and progressive and does everything that they can to be an ally to the X-Men and mutant kind as a whole. That is the role that Tempo plays in this universe. Now, of course, there are definitely some teases for like Fall of X stuff in this comic because when Destiny approaches Bishop in this issue, she brings up that she knows something is coming Bishop's way, that something very bad is about to happen on Krakoa. And she doesn't say exactly what it is because typically when Destiny sees someone's future, whether it's in this universe or in the Earth 616 universe, typically she doesn't tell them exactly what's going to happen because telling people about their future is a really good way to make things worse. But Bishop doesn't really take any of it to heart. He just thinks like, oh, well, yeah, this is just Tuesday. But what this version of Destiny is referring to is the upcoming events that are going to take place at this year's Hellfire Gala, as well as the upcoming Fall of X line of X-Men comics. Everything else in this book is pretty cool too. I do like the stuff that's going on with Armor and uh, Surge and Amass and all the other uh, new characters that are part of Bishop's War College. But the really interesting part here is what we learn about Orcus's plan to infiltrate Krakoa, because as we saw in the previous uh, couple of issues, the Fenris twins are being employed by Orcus to drill into Krakoa. They're operating in the shadows, burrowing their way through Krakoa in ways that I'm almost surprised no one has recognized yet. I'm surprised neither Black Tom Cassidy or Cypher or even Krakoa itself have caught wind of any of this. The reason why Orcus is going this route is because Moira has a plan. She's using the Fenris twins to dig through Krakoa to try and reach 
the pit where all of Krakoa's exiled mutants typically hang out. And what they're going to do is that they're going to unleash the blight swill that they've been using against the War College mutants from the previous issues and use it to poison Krakoa and effectively render it no longer having its mutant capabilities. And in this unleashing the exiled mutants on Krakoa from the pit, and letting them run roughshod on the island. Namely, they want to unleash Sabretooth because they know Sabretooth would just wreak havoc across the island. But there's one major problem with Moira's plan. You see, things have changed since Moira has been on the island. Since Moira was demutified and kicked off the island, she wasn't around for when Sabretooth busted out of the pit. As a matter of fact, it's presumable that none of the mutants that we have seen put in the pit over the course of the X-Men comics since House of X number six, it's presumable none of them are down there. Granted, we haven't seen any mutants other than the ones that we have seen in either of the Sabretooth series or the Sabretooth and the Exile series. If there were any other mutants that were exiled, we don't know about them. But every mutant that we have seen visibly exiled, all of them, are outside of the pit running around doing other stuff. So that part of Moira's plan ain't gonna hold water. However, there may be some mutants that we have never seen put in the pit that could be down there. That could be equally as dangerous. That said, the Blightswill is still a problem. If they unleash Blightswill across Krakoa, considering how all of Krakoa's technology works, this could effectively shut down the island and render Krakoa inert dead as inert as it is in the sense of sinister series currently either way moira has ambitions and she is ready to unleash them and i can't wait to see how this all plays out but i'm definitely ready to see what else we get out of the earth 63 stuff by the time we get to the end of this we know there's gonna be a big duke Aru on that version of the earth in the marvel comics universe and bishop is still gonna be around for it and i'm hoping we figure out by the next issue exactly where the hell tempo is the earth 616 tempo and i kind of hope we get to see some more mutants from earth 63 because I'm really liking it. But anyways, if you enjoyed this video, do the YouTube thing, like, share, comment, subscribe, and make sure you tap that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of the videos that I put out. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video and let me know what you thought about Bishop War College number three. Keep it plus ultra and sound off in the comments.